Hello everyone, this is Jarlexel from channel Duello and uh, I'd like to start this video by making an apology for the lack of content in the last week or so uh, Why? Because uh, as you all know, I mean uh, in the beginning of season uh, I posted uh, deck guys for each faction every other day uh, and then uh, I wanted to start a you know second run of uh, the decks but uh, there weren't really any interesting or different decks that I wanted to share with. And to be honest with you, uh, the meta isn't really in a good state. So it wasn't really fun to play against mate spam or, you know, uh, some other kind of weird decks. Uh, I mean, playing against them wasn't fun at all. Uh, that's why I didn't want to shoot any more deck guys in the last week. Uh, but I reviewed the, uh, you know, final uh, part of the expansion but still uh, I apologize for the uh, lack of content so uh, hopefully this could change in the upcoming season uh, there are uh, there are some several you know uh, balance changes and so on they're not really that significant but hopefully we will see a better meta and uh, and on top of that the last season weren't competitive so I think this season is competitive and there will be a new journey and uh, the Salvani event. So hopefully uh, this month will be more fun compared to the last one. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Uh, I'm going to be uh, talking about the changes. Uh, the patch 9.5, I guess, that's, that's the number. But I'm not going to go over the cards individually. Uh, I will be doing that in the Turkish channel, so if you are a Turkish language speaker, make sure to check that video out as well. Uh, I'll probably upload it at the same time with this video. Uh, but in this video, I'll be talking about the meta change. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the current decks right now and how they are going to be affected and whether there will be new decks and so on. So that's the uh, theme of this video. Okay, so let's get started then. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, uh, following the uh, that notes, uh, you know, patch notes. So I'll start with Monsters. Okay, so Monsters was not really in a good spot last update, last patch. And uh, you can see it from the, you know, recent uh, tournament. Nobody brought Monsters deck to the tournament. So that's not su surprising at all because... The other, you know, uh, also the syndicates was in a bad place as well. And, uh, but the other four factions are significantly better than the others. So that's why people kind of preferred playing them both on ladder and also in tournaments. So what about monsters? Uh, what options did we have last patch? Well, uh, the last patch, <laughs> the strongest monster deck was Keltul's deck. The carapace engine stick uh, and there were two different versions of it but the idea was the same you know uh, thanks to the newly released card which is sabbath you could replay your powerful engines such as Keltulus. Uh the recent balance changes do not affect this deck at all so i think it's a good thing so there are no nerfs to it but i'm not sure if this deck is like uh at best tier two or uh, i think this is a tier three deck because especially in northern realms is a terrible matchup because when you play she uh, i mean not she who knows but the witch's sabbath all the powerful northern rams engine come back again so uh, and the northern rams will still be dominant in the ladder so I, i'm not really sure if this is a good idea to play for the next season uh, what about other options? Well, you could always play Wild Hunt uh, deck. So that was average at best. You know, the point slam with all the Wild Hunt cards and so on. Again, no changes to this deck. But uh, can we see some, you know, new cards added to this deck? I mean, maybe we could see the new, newly buffed card, Toad Prince. I think this... Uh, modification or buff is really significant Toad Priest can now uh, consume a unit with 4 or less power which changes a lot so for 8 provision you play a 3 point unit plus you consume a 4 point unit uh, 4 power unit 
and also you know the, the power of this chain so this, this is a 8 for 11 card right now and there are a lot of you know powerful for uh power engines you know when you play when the northern ramps uh, player plays their you know students they are at four power initially so you can immediately consume them or the sorcerers of dull blood uh, they're also tasty meals <laughs> so we could see that card you know actually being added to any kind of uh, point slam deck i mean even if the deck isn't running uh, control options that card is pretty good i guess so it could replace a card like add a striga maybe so i think uh we will see toad prince in monster decks so that's my first prediction uh what about other deck options well the relics uh, I'm not sure if the relics will be played in this in the next season. I, I tasted Yaga. It's not that good. Uh, I wish they somehow buffed that card, but they didn't do this. Do it this patch, and uh, the, and this deck was also running Mushy Truffle, and Mushy Truffle has been nerfed by one provision. So the deck I'm showing you got already nerfed, and it wasn't a, a strong deck at all. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if we're gonna see relic decks. And besides, uh, there are some, you know, let's say classic monster cards that have been buffed. So I think people will try them. Like, for example, Goliath. You know, Goliath. Uh, I mean, we, we weren't seeing this guy for a while, but I mean, maybe in the last three or four, four, four or five months ago, I mean, Goliath was still being played. So the provision has been reduced from eight to uh, seven. Which is a big deal in my opinion so this could see play and also osrel uh we we only see osrel and calculus text and now we don't see him anymore but the provision also has been changed uh, from nine to eight which is really a good thing osrel is still a good card combined with egern and uh also uh, the uh, spear tip has been buffed as well the provision has been reduced but i don't think we're gonna see him in uh, on being played i don't think it's that good of a card and there's also draw above the drowner so if you're playing you know a thrive heavy deck uh drowner could be a really good choice for four provision from now on for five provision this was really bad but for for four provision i think uh, this card is better than other four provision thrive units so we could see that card being included in the meta, definitely. And uh, what about other options? Well, there is this Erica Swarm deck, the control deck. So nothing has been changed here. No buffs or nerfs to this deck. But this deck isn't that strong again. You could also play Erica Swarm, the usual Swarm uh, deck. Again, no changes to that, to that deck as well. But uh, we could see some people trying out death wish uh, decks uh, the haunt decks why because uh there are two significant buffs to those decks that left higher vampire has been uh, buffed now it will be six but this isn't only a one point buff this is actually a three point buff because you consume that left twice so when you consume that left, you know, uh, the amount will be consumed will be six compared to five. So for each consume, we're going to see more points. So this is a big buff. It's going to be 10 for, I guess, what, uh, 18, which is really huge. And uh, that left was already a pretty good card. So now I think it's better. So if you're running some kind of a death wish deck, that left should be a standard inclusion auto include card. I think it's great that they did that and uh there's also another buff to mirror they keep buffing this card interestingly okay i didn't write i here and now mirina will be six powers so the po point swing will be even more so when you s steal a unit uh with four or less power there will be one more point so th these are all good news for death wish decks but the bad thing is unfortunately overwhelming hunger leader ability isn't good anymore i mean i wish uh, they returned it to the three charge uh, that's what how it was used to be but uh, 
thanks to or no thanks to the uh, V deck uh, V card, they decided to nerf the leader ability instead of you know uh, removing this toxic card from the game. Unfortunately, I mean they nerfed the V, but they didn't have to nerf overwhelming hunger leader ability. So compared, to, uh, I mean using two or three charges really changes things a lot especially if your haunt gets heat waved you're not gonna get a lot of consume uh, opportunities so when you're using that left that could be a problem so you gotta use you know manual consume units and so on but i mean uh we'll see some people try out since monsters is weak uh, i'm pretty sure i will probably uh, try out uh death wish and overwhelming hunger deck because I really like playing that deck, so hopefully uh, these changes will be for the better. Okay, so that's it for monsters. I don't think there are any more changes that need to be t highlighted. Uh, let's move to Northern Realms. Well, for Northern Realms, there's this toxic meditating mage uh, uh, deck with the pincer maneuver leader ability. I didn't even bother to build that deck, so I can't display it <laughs> on the screen. That deck is toxic and is unfun to play or play against. So what they did is uh, nerf the meditating mage to three power. I think the real problem is with the design of that card. There shouldn't be a, a resilience keyword attached to a four point four provision card. That's a mistake. But you know, making this three power is kind of a big deal. Why? Because when you play this, it's going to be even lower tempo. And on top of that, I mean, the deck is designed to produce a lot of mages. So it's, suppose you have like eight or nine mage, meditating mages and their power is reduced by one. So that, that is a big, you know, nerf. And, uh, well, I mean, uh, these changes, I mean, changes like these usually reflect the beginning of the season. So meditating mage wasn't really popular last week. So alumni spam was more popular and that deck didn't receive any significant nerfs so i'm gonna talk about that next but uh again talking about this meditating mage deck so aretuza adept uh, needed to be nerfed because there are a lot of patience units right now compared to the previous patches because they added new units new patience units so aretuza adept kind of got insane when you're using a lot of patience units in the same deck so uh, she turned out to a mini colgrim so uh, they nerfed this card to 5 provision. I think this is a wrong approach. Instead, they should have done the nerf like this. So, I mean, whenever an allied uh, unit's patience is triggered, boost up by 1. It's not... Uh, well, let's say uh, the boost should be 1 point per turn. I mean, if there are multiple patience units, uh, this unit should uh, still keep uh, p uh, boosting herself by 1. So I don't know how to properly word it on the card but they should have done a, a modification like that instead of increasing the uh, provision cost so when you make this card five provision uh, this card uh, automatically becomes trash uh, we're not gonna see this card anymore that's what i predict okay uh, and uh, besides i mean that four point engine was not bad so they should have just limited to the boost just by just one you know if let's say if there is a light unit with patience and so on, you know, boost yourself by one, something like that. Okay, so what about the other uh, Northern Rams changes? And that deck was also running Mushy Truffle. And Mushy Truffle's provision has been increased by one. So uh, that nerf is uh, affecting a lot of decks, actually. So I'm going to talk about each of them. And also one point loss from that card. So that Meditating Mage deck is heavily nerfed. So hopefully we're not going to see any more of it but there's this other uh mage spam deck actually uh, alumni spam deck this deck has been nerfed by just one point uh the mushy truffle you know is, is temp provision and talking about this change i'm not sure i mean yeah the the card is pretty good but you know in order to play it you need to break your devotion so there is a price to pay it and uh maybe instead of nerfing this card maybe they should have buffed more uh devotion cards i mean there there could be cards like that i don't think this card is overpowered but this is a really very very good value card and uh you know every faction can use this card so you know it's not restricted to a single faction 
I'm not sure if it needed an, it, if it needed a nerf, but that's fine. I guess we'll just go along with it. I'm not complaining. So anyway, uh, this tech has been. I mean, why aren't they fixing this bug anyway? I mean, we have to, you know, reload it just to see it properly. Okay, so now it looks fine. So this tech is really strong. I mean, you, you just can't keep up with the engines when you're defending against this deck. Uh, you, uh, I mean, if the deck somehow manages to, you know, uh, make Ben Art student and Earth user student's patience value to 4, which is really doable. Yeah, I mean, you can protect them. And uh, the deck gets kind of out of control. You can keep spamming alumni. I mean, if even if the alumni, you know, hits for 4 or something like that, I mean, uh, it's really threatening because the opponent can play like four or five uh, alumni and uh, they can easily win the game thanks to that interaction. So there are no nerfs other than the Mushy Truffle to this deck. So uh, the deck will somehow find a way to, you know, maybe get rid of casting contest and add a four provision card or something like that. So this is totally playable. Maybe they can get rid of meditating mages because these are kind of bait cards so people were thinking like okay we're playing against meditating mages deck and they were killing these uh, but instead they should have saved their <laughs> removal for these two cards but i mean if you're no if you know what your opponent is playing if you have the list uh the deck is somewhat easy to defend but if you if you think you're facing a siege deck, uh, you could be in trouble because when if you don't touch those students, uh, they get really uh, big. Not big, but I mean, uh, you get a lot of carryover with alumni. So I wish they uh, somehow find a way to nerf alumni uh, as well. So uh, they could be a problem this season. Okay, so talking about the regular, you know, uh, inspired Zeal dual deck. I mean, some versions use Siege, some versions do not. There are no changes to this deck. And uh, I think this will be the tier 1 deck this season. Because, you know, all the other you know, decks get nerfed. Because uh, this deck isn't running Mushy Truffle. That's why it's stronger right now. And uh, on top of that, Caraballista got a buff. Let's take a look at that card. Okay, so again, it's double R. Okay. Uh, this card will have a uh, cooldown 3. So you can play winch on it and get another uh, 2 damage by it. So this card was being used last year or maybe something like that. So, But I mean, since uh, Reinforced Ballista got much better, uh, you don't want to use Carry Ballista. But maybe now you can use it. Because sometimes uh, this deck tries to find uh, you know 5 provision you know value card. Maybe you could make some adjustments and use these Caraballistas instead of Ballistas and, you know, get rid of a gold card at the top. Or I mean, adjustments could be made. So this this is much better compared to Ballista. But, uh, as you see, it's five provisions. But uh, especially with the uh, with using Winch, you could get a lot of value. So the, especially if the opponent isn't running Heatwave, your Siege could find a lot of value. So... I think this is a good buff. And other than that, are there any uh, changes? Yeah, there are some changes, but they're not that significant. Maybe, I mean, if you want to play Uprising, which is really <laughs> unlikely you want to do that. Unfortunately, that archetype is not strong anymore. But Reinhardt Auto uh, has been buffed. Okay. Although... So, and the buff is significant actually. He will have formation, so you can play this on uh, range row and uh, get one more point. On top of that, instead of deploy, now he will have zeal, order zeal. So they, they made similar changes to other cards in Northern Realms. And, uh, and six power is really difficult to get remote. And if you play this on range row, I mean, even Giga Scorpion decoction uh, cannot kill this. So when you play Reinhardt on the range row and uh, play a couple of cards next to it, you can uh, and then use your seal ability a couple of turns later. So uh, a lot of value. 
and also Visigurd was really a good card at the when the uprising was really good and they nerfed it to the ground he was completely useless but now uh, I think he could be uh, I mean, we, we could maybe see this guy being returned to the meta if uprising is somehow to, somewhat uh, playable why uh, they, they are adding uh, armor to it now you need seven point removal and that's not easy to do so now it's easier to protect Visigurd uh, so the opponent may have to you know use heat wave to remove him so I think this is a good change and uh, maybe people will try uprising it's really hard to tell if that deck uh, is going to be strong again but uh, I don't think it will so uh, I think right now inspired zeal is a better leader choice for northern realms and there is also a buff to profit the shield guy the dual card uh, but, uh, the list uh, talks about this card being in syndicate but syndicate will never use this card because I mean this has synergy with shield so this is an order realms card I mean no one would play this okay this, this guy is a fire storm but you don't want to use this in a fire storm deck it's, it doesn't make sense so anyway so maybe if you're running a shield deck this could be playable why because they're adding two power to this so eight for eight uh and when you play next to a unit next to prophet Livioda, you're going to give it shield so uh, that could be a really powerful interaction if the opponent has no answer to him and it's, it's really uh, difficult to answer to an eight power card so we could see some uh some people try out a uh, shield deck using this guy Okay, so that's about it for Northern Realms. For Skellige, well, Skellige decks are getting, uh, let's say, uh, the most popular Skellige deck last season was uh, still uh, Reckless Fury because that leader ability is really strong. And uh, Reckless Fury had a couple of versions. One of them was using one, uh, Sunset Wonder, the other was not. Both are really good. Both are using discard package and both are using uh, Mushy Truffle and also again i mean this nonsense uh Fukusia. so those car two cards are really good and both of them are getting uh nerf so much truffle you know you, you need to uh, remove a card to make room for a, uh, another provision so and also Fukusia's power is getting reduced to four uh, she's still one of the best cards in the game it doesn't really matter but you know one point is one point sometimes that one point difference uh, you know besides the game uh, game result so that that's a big that could be a big deal uh, in some cases so so two points uh, nerf to this deck but i think we're gonna see this deck still being played in the uh, new season okay skellige had uh, other options uh, in the last season so that was a good thing definitely uh, uh reckless flurry was the strongest deck but again i mean you could play rain and rain was really popular in the beginning of the season and rain deck uh i don't think it's really receiving any nerfs right so, so i mean Fukusia is getting a one point nerf so that that deck wasn't using truffle so that one point nerf isn't doesn't change much so the if you want you can use the same list here with discard package i think it's best with a discard package and there is also uh this mushroom deck with Gedinith, uh, Draco Tortoise, and Fokusia. So this deck is getting two po two point nerf, one from Provision to Mushy Travel and one from Fokusia. And uh, this deck uh, matches well against some s certain decks, but against some decks really struggle. Uh, but I, I think I, I still think and you know uh, the reckless flurry is a better choice than the uh, battle trends but if you enjoy playing it feel free it's, it's still strong in my opinion and then uh, there is this warrior deck there isn't an optimized this is you know you just <laughs> you gotta experiment with it uh, CD project red has been you know uh, consistently uh, taking all the nerfs that they have done to warriors in the past warriors were really strong they nerfed it over and over and over i mean with each patch now they're taking all the nerfs back 
And uh, yeah, there are some buffs to a warrior archetype. Like, what? Uh, let's take a look at it. For example, Blood Eagle. Because this deck wasn't using Blood Eagle, but you can uh, again go with this routine. Now, Blood Eagle will kind of work with Bloodthirst too. Why? Because uh, they're going to change how it works. So, uh, after you apply Blood Eagle, the game will check if you have Bloodthirst 3 or not. So, if you play this on a white health unit, uh, you're going to get another Bloodthirst, and there were already two unit with uh, red health and then you can trigger the death blow ability and it, this makes card stronger definitely and also same thing goes with Swalwad Ravager uh, again uh, the game is gonna check Bloodthirst after he hits but the uh, Bloodthirst 2 ability isn't that great so give it bleeding for two turns they are just much better options at four provisions they're better warriors so you, you're not gonna use this and uh, also uh, there is this villager card. She was really popular when warriors archetype uh, got buffed with <laughs> Herald and Blood Eagle when they were first introduced. And they uh, nerfed this card. Uh, she had four bleeding. Now it's three, but they're going back to four right now because uh, the Mato is going to allow it. But I'm not sure you want to use her again. There are better four provisions options not right now. And there is also what a uh, skull. Okay, skull got buffed as well. He is a warrior. Now he's six provisions. Unfortunately, the downside of this card is so huge. Uh, Berserk five destroy self is a big deal. This card can maybe uh, be kept for reach if the opponent passes. You play this for ten points and so on. I'm not sure you want to use this card. But still, it's a buff, so I'm not going to argue that it got better. So that's it for Skellige, I guess. So, uh, Mushy Troubles is definitely a uh, nerf to Skellige, although it's a, you know, a neutral card. Skellige liked that card the best compared to other uh, factions, so there's some nerf to Skellige. But uh, I think that's still going to be the, be one of the best four factions in the game in the next uh, season. Now let's talk about the other three factions. And uh, first we have Skoetel. Now uh, Skoetel, uh, I'm, I'm taking a look at the changes there, there aren't many changes on Skoetel. Uh, however, there is one single change, which is a nerf, and that would affect a lot of decks, and that is uh, Sorcerer's Doll Blathana. And uh, this card was being used in almost every single Skoetel deck, other than, you know, heavy control versions. And uh, the provision has been uh, increased to 6, and that is a big deal. Uh, I mean, uh, why? Because uh, uh, this the, uh, nerf, I mean, uh, is 2 points, actually. Because, you know, when you use Sorceress, you always use 2 copies of her, so... All of a sudden, you need to make room for two provisions, and you need to cut out one of the mid-range golds uh, in Nature's Gift and other square tail decks. I mean, some some pe some people play different, you know, leaders, but the best leader is obviously Nature's Gift, and you can uh, use different versions of it. The list I'm showing you is the Devotion version. So, you know, if you want to include sorceresses, I guess you got to cut Frexinet or something like that. But uh. There is a buff to another card, and uh, it is hard to pronounce that, but let's find that. Yeah, there it is. We'll just call it the Patronus spell from Harry Potter, because that looks like it. And this spell has been, is going to be uh, increased to 7, I mean, decreased to 7 provisions. And when this card was released, I was always talking about, I mean, this, this is just too much 9 provisions. And, and now the 7 provisions makes much more sense. And uh, it looks like this card is going to be used similar to Flying Redenian Syndicate. And they're going to uh, decrease the boost. It's not going to boost by 6, but 5. But that's not such a big deal. I mean, this is a buff, definitely, in 7 provisions. Now, maybe uh, some people would prefer to add this card, because it's going to uh, add more consistency to the deck, although the deck is, you know, consistent enough. But maybe you could take out Fav or something like that. We'll see. But still, I mean, uh, this could be really good, I guess. 
and then uh, let's take a look at the other versions of you know uh, nature's gift text there is this non-devotion version and then we have this Gazra's version and philavandril version so i played all of these actually the most fun i had was with philavandril i i mean i like you know new cards maybe that's one of the reasons uh, i mean taking a look at this if we want to you know to put two copies of sorcerers we probably want to cut Ciaran from the lists, maybe, and maybe Council, or I, I don't know, I mean, something needs to be cut, uh, obviously. So, without a doubt, the deck is going to be worse <laughs> with this, you know, nerf. And, uh, well, this deck wasn't using Mushy Truffle, so that's a bonus, so that's not going to be affected. But that, you know, two-point nerf is a big deal in my opinion. Still, uh, Syndicus is going to be, I mean, uh, Skirtle is going to be pretty good, but not just good enough to be top tier or just anything like that, in my opinion. And uh, we also have some other changes to other Skirtle girls, but I don't think that's worth mentioning at all. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, there, there is this hand buff thing, and boost deck, our hand buff. Torque is getting a buff already and uh, he's gonna be five power from now on but the thing with torque is i mean torque is was already getting huge like <laughs> he could reach up to 20 points or something like that at the end of the game uh, but the thing is i mean uh you he gets heat waved or get reset or something like that so it doesn't really matter whether he's four or five provision uh the problem with invigorate tech is the leader ability well uh when uh, this, I mean, you gotta win the round. If you lose the round, opponent's gonna bleed you out of your uh, boosted cards, and then uh, in the final round, uh, you're gonna end up with nothing or not much, I guess. So th still, the usage of leader uh, is much better than it used to be, obviously, but I think it's still there yet. So anyway, I mean, the cards are pretty good, but the leader kind of still sucks. And uh, you can still play Alzur with Precision Strike or other, you know, Hyper Control strategies. Those are all options, but I think they're kind of power crap right now. E even though they didn't get any nerfs. Uh, I'm not sure that's the best option for Squirtle this season. Uh, but time will tell. Because, you know, uh, well, actually, uh, Alzur deck got a nerf too. You know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is from the last season, but... Still, I mean, sorceresses are getting nerfed, so you you gotta make room for two provisions in the, in that deck also. So maybe you should play the heavy control version, which isn't really healthy at all. But that deck is kind of really bad in uh, blue coin. Uh, you have to play on red coin to you know uh, get some wins, and that's not guaranteed at all. Okay, so what about uh, Nilfgaard? Nilfgaard was one of the best faction last season. And uh, one of their most important cards is getting a nerf. And let's take a look at this classic version. Oh my god, I mean, this bug is killing me. Okay, so uh, Coup de Gras is getting a nerf. Uh, it's going back to temp revision. Uh, Coup de Gras wasn't being used very frequently when it was first released so and uh, cdpr uh, buffed it a couple of times now it is kind of overtuned to be honest with you and temp provision makes sense uh, for a card such powerful as this and uh i think it's a good call to make a 10 provision other than that this deck isn't getting any nerfs but still you know you gotta make one room one provision room for that and the uh, I mean, if I'm going to play this, this, for example, I probably cut one of the remedies or assassination and put a four provision card. So that's not such a big deal. But this is not the only version you can play. Uh, Nilfgaard Assimilate. Uh, uh, Wonder is another option with uh, double cross ability. This is also pretty good, but it's not running Lux. So this is more reliant on uh, Assimilate engines. And for example, uh, I mean, although this is not the most ideal version this is the deck uh, the version that i'm using this one is slightly better i guess uh, for example Bobby, what are you going to cut here so uh, the deck is kind of light on five provision most of the cards are on four provisions so uh, i think cutting vigo could be an option or meno but meno is meno provides a lot of consistency so i don't know what will happen we'll see 
And uh, what about other cards? Well, there are some buffs in Nilfgaard. Uh, such as Mage Infiltrator is getting an interesting buff. Let's take a look at it. And uh, Mage Infiltrator, if uh, this card deals death blow with this uh, damaging adjacent units by three, uh, you can get her back to your site. So that, that is extra one point uh, in addition to the, what this card is doing. No, it's actually two point because the card will not stay on the opponent's side. So two, two points buff. But I mean, if you cannot deal death blows, the card is still the same. But I think maybe you can uh, do that with the other, you know, uh, there are some uh, damage cards, such as this, uh, the new card, then it turn code, and uh, maybe you can use this and, you know, adjust the damage so you can play Mage Infiltrator, I guess. But I'm not sure if that card is still really strong. I'm not sure, so. Uh, but maybe, I mean, you could add Mage Infiltrator in addition to the Brathen uh, duo, so maybe that could be a trio for Brathens, as, as it used to be when the card was first released. And uh, there are also some buffs to soldiers. Uh, Crossbowman is getting a buff. Now he's going to be 4 provision, but that's uh, more than 1 point buff, because when you play Crossbowman, you play Ramon and another copy of it, so it is kind of a 2 or 3 point buff, So that, which is, that is really good. But I'm not sure uh, soldiers are strong enough. And there's also a buff to one of the new cards, Illusionist. And the power will be uh, increased to 4, so since this is bonded, it is kind of a buff that is more than one point actually and uh well this card could be dangerous with a certain build up and soldiers decks work uh, using this so we could see uh, a deck like that but i played against that deck when i was playing nilfgaard and that deck is really uh not good against uh, the mirror especially assimilate because uh you clog your own board because there will be a lot of units on your side of the board but uh, that could be an option uh, for Nilfgaard if you don't, if you're bored of playing Assimilate. And finally, Syndicate. Uh, Syndicate, uh, well, the last expansion uh, kinda uh, four starts to play Bounty, but Bounty is just not working. I mean, there are really rare cases that you win games with uh, playing really creatively or something like that, of the, or if the opponent plays bad. Because bounty deck isn't particularly strong. Uh, well, I have this version, but this is not good, I guess. I mean, uh, in the beginning of last season, I tried many versions. It's just not working. Uh, there is a buff to bounty deck. Uh, which hunter executioner? Where is that? Yeah. This is going to be four, four points. The power buff. And from now on, uh, you cannot uh, remove it with Circle of Life and dip in the Pontar. So that's about the only difference. Still, it's a buff. So good for the people who will be playing Bounty this season. And good luck as well. <laughs> and uh, what about, you know, classic Syndicate cards? You know, if you want to play Passive Flora or Jackpot, are there any changes? Mm, well, there are some changes. Uh, some, let's say, solid you know, Syndicate cards are getting buffed. Uh, last uh, patch, they kind of buffed all the Purify cards, but uh, Kalkstein, now they are doing it. Kalkstein's uh, provision is getting uh, reduced to 6. And uh, if you plan on adding a Purify unit, uh, so and not planning on playing Bounty, I think Kalkstein is a better option than Kurt now. Because, you know, there is also Profit too, so it's a 6 for 7 card. And plus, uh, you have kind of unlimited uh, charges of purifies as long as you have the coin. So that is really good, I guess. And if he's a blind die, you can play trigger Passiflora with him. So th this is a really good change for Passiflora decks. And uh, Bincy, when, when this card isn't answered, could be really game-changing. So Provision is getting uh, down to 9. Well, in terms of deck building, this will help, but still, uh, I mean, this this uh, unit gets really tall, and then all of a sudden, with Heat Wave and Reset, 
everything is gone. So I mean, still it's a buff. And then uh, Mutated Hounds, another frequently used card uh, with Poison Package. So the power will be 5, so good for the card. So maybe you can add 1 or 2 copies of it uh, along with the other Fistech Package. So those are minor but uh, good changes. And then uh, there's a, I, th I mean, there are some other changes, but I'm not going to talk about them. But uh, there's a change that I find it really powerful, which are the lackeys. Cut up lackeys now will be four provisions, and uh, which means that we can use them with portal. And uh, compare this with mutant cards. You know, uh, in the past we were using portal, and you know putting these on the board, Intimidate Engines, a couple of them. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's much worse than Lackeys, because Lackeys have bonded, and after uh, two turns, the other copy will come up, and, you know, with bonded, you can deliver, you know, insane damage, and you can thin out your deck with Portal. So we could see some uh, people testing out uh, crime decks with portal you know devote non-devotion version obviously since you're playing portal and uh, we can see uh, the tunnel drill especially with that deck because you will be playing a lot of crime ducks and then your uh, finisher gort that could work maybe and uh, i think that's about it there's really nothing important to talk about uh, syndicates i don't think these changes will uh, make syndicates a top tier uh, faction this season. I think the top four faction could stay the same. Uh, we'll see about monsters, and my prediction will be Northern Realms, uh, the best uh, faction in this patch, uh, along with Nilfgaard, and also Skellig has lost, lost some blood, but still, that's going to be top four. So, uh, not much will change, but the changes are for the better. Uh, I mean, most importantly, we're not going to see, hopefully, uh, that toxic meditating mages deck. I mean, we'll see uh, alumni, unfortunately, but they are uh, healthier than <laughs> spamming uh, meditating mages. So uh, hopefully that is fixed from now. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, thank you for bearing me here and listening to me. And uh, we'll see new deck guys in this season. And uh, hope to see you there. Bye-bye.